Today we're talking about the curse that is flakes. Oh, I'm dry. The curse that is flakes. The curse that is flake. You get the phone number, you meet the person, you meet the girl, you make a connection and then you never hear from them again or they say they're gonna meet up with you but they never meet up with you. There's a million reasons why you're getting it wrong, why you're not asking properly, why the flake is happening. We're gonna solve all of those in this video here today. We wanna to talk about how to avoid flakes. Now it's a combination of things. To avoid flakes, it's about who you are as a person, the way you ask for a phone number or how to get a connection with a new person, the way that you eventually plan the meetup, the way that you message in between getting the phone number and setting the meetup, and then having a really good understanding of the person that you're speaking to and the role that you might play in their life, the kind of logistics, and even their age and demographic and socioeconomic status. There's a big combination of things in the way that you ask for a phone number that will determine if the phone number is going to flake. You might be asking for somebody for a phone number in a park or a bar or a party or a social event. There's a couple of things that we put on a kind of a to-do list that makes asking for a number solid, like to get a solid number. It's really good to ask early on in a conversation. If you ask early on, you're going to leave on a positive high note and you're going to get a really good name connection, which is good for later on in the party or the event. It's really important that you take some time not just to speak to that person but also to speak to the people around that person okay that person might be really excited to meet you but that's not all there is to the equation you need to be social with everyone it's really important that you can say to the person that you're meeting what it is about them individually that you think is interesting about them individually they're hard-working they're unique point out that you have a common interest but if you can give a really specific personality compliment that person you're getting the number from really remembers that. You get a phone number, it really counts for a lot if you can be the one who eventually leaves that event with them. We call that the front door rule concept, that you are not just running around trying to get phone numbers and make connections with everyone, that you're actually enjoying following through, relaxing, taking your time, and building a kind of a group vibe and all going together, so that if you leave together and you kind of hug and send them off in the Uber or the taxi or the train, whatever they're going on, you've left together rather than they leave and then they think that you're just running back inside of the club or bar to go and get other phone numbers. There's gotta be a bit of a commitment. These are a list of the ways to make the number solid. Getting the phone number, getting the connection is just a part of the problem. That's a part of the process. The person who you've asked the phone number to, they are receiving your attention. You're the one who's taking the initiative. They're apathetic. They're apathetic. They don't really care if you message or not. You know, as they always say, people are not motivated by gaining something new. They're motivated by not l losing something that they already have. And you are not something that they already have. They are curious to hear what you've got to say. And of course, people like the attention. People like the excitement and the interest and the intrigue of getting new attention. But remember, they are apathetic. So what that means for you, if you want to avoid flakes, is you need to be able to get down to business. If you're the kind of guy who gets a phone number and you don't have the backbone or the spine or, you know, as they say in the olden days, if you don't have the balls to ask for anything, then you're not in business. And the recipient, the person who you've taken initiative unto, is gonna be thinking, why am I getting these messages? This person who's texting me, this guy who's texting me, he's just, he's going nowhere. There's no, he's got nothing to say here. I'm not even interested. So of course the number will just go to nothing. It'll flake, it'll ghost. The answer to this is that you need to call to action relatively quickly. And it's a well-known kind of four-part process. Stage one, text your name. Later on, open the conversation. Basically update them with what's going on in your life. Step three is when you wanna to try to get a bit of a back and forth going, right? update with what you're doing, ask about what they're doing. And then once you get a kind of a bit of a hot back and forth going, that's when you want to say, hey, I've seen that I can get a reservation at this really cool wine bar, sushi bar, cigar bar, paintball bar, axe throwing bar, whatever it is kind of bar that you like going to. You want to state that you're interested in meeting up with them one-on-one. -on -one. And as we spoke about in last week's blog, you're reflecting that you're organized, that they are worth something to you and that you have standards in the way that you organize social social fixtures, dates. You are gonna get flakes if you don't call to action at all and you're disorganizing, you're just wishy-washy, you're, you're lacking in backbone and spine and you're not moving things forward. So step number one, you know, to avoiding flakes is actually do something with the number Otherwise, nothing is gonna happen and everything is gonna flake in. The reason why I'm harping on this point a little bit more is because that's the reason why most of you guys aren't getting anything, right? The, the person you're texting 
you're the one who asked their number, you're the one who started the conversation, you're the one who wants to make something happen, you need to then make something happen, right? You can't ask somebody who's apathetic for a phone number, they give it up because of course they're like options and they're curious, they're not gonna turn around and ask you out because you're the one who initiated it and that person who you asked is probably already inundated with options anyway. So get to the get to the point. When it comes to flakes, another reason why you'll get a lot of flakes is because you serve absolutely no purpose in that person's life. Maybe at the party or the bar or the club or whatever it is, you're romantically interested in the person that you're asking the phone number from, but you don't serve any purpose. If that person's traveling and they're leaving, there's no point for them to really respond to a lot of texts from you and to build a relationship with you. If you live a significantly long way away from that person, like if there's a geographical issue, then it's gonna be really hard as well. If you're from socioeconomically different statuses, that makes it tricky as well. So never say never, there's all these crazy and interesting love stories of people from long distance and different religions, different age groups getting together. But oftentimes, you know, you might grab a phone number in the bar, the club, the party or whatever, and that person might just be such a different lifestyle from you that when that person receives a text from you, they're thinking, what's the point? Now, then you're going to ask me, well, why, why, Alex, did they give me the phone number in the first place? Well, the answer is they think, or oh, maybe it's going to lead to an invitation or a party or networking. And to be honest, you know, every person loves to get a lot of Tinder matches and every person loves to have a lot of messages coming into their phone. There was this one famous ad in South Korea for plastic surgery. And there was a woman who didn't have plastic surgery and her phone was always on full battery, right? Because her face wasn't what everybody wanted to text, I suppose, I don't know. Anyway, she goes and gets plastic surgery and then she's like, wow, my phone is always flat because so many people are messaging me. You know, it's nice for people to feel wanted and relevant, so they're always gonna give out that phone number. And you can imagine now, a person, a girl, a guy, whoever, he's sitting down at coffee with friends, she's sitting down at coffee with friends, and she's like, oh wow, everybody's texting me, I'm so popular, I just want you all to know that. That's human nature, all right? You can't fault the recipient, you can't fault the person who you asked the phone number for. They're allowed to play their game, they're allowed to do that. It's really up to you to have a think about does this person have a comparable lifestyle to you? Are they traveling? Are they in college and you're in the professional world? Are you in college and they're in the professional world? Are they currently in a relationship? Are they not even of the sexual orientation untoward you? Maybe they're not interested in your gender and sexual orientation. There's all of those things and that's why they flake is you actually haven't done anything wrong. It's just that logistically and in terms of lifestyle, there wasn't a lot of potential there to begin with. Now you're allowed to ask. You're allowed to ask if you wanna meet up and set the date and those kind of things. If that person gave you the phone number, you can fire away. You can start the negotiation. You can say, hey, let's meet up. I know a time, I know a place. And you can persist up to a point. If they gave you the phone number, then you can act on that phone number, but be smart about it. You're gonna do a lot better to try to get phone numbers from people with a comparable lifestyle, a comparable region, and you know, not even necessarily comparable interests, but lifestyle and region, and there's a lot of them. You know, if you go out in areas near you, and that's gonna be like festivals and markets and running clubs and gym classes, of course bars on a Friday and Thursday afternoon for happy hour, it's gonna be a lot of people with comparable lifestyle and, and geographical region to you. Most of all, one of the reasons why you're getting flakes is because you're asking people who have no interest in connecting with you in the first place. Let's be honest, they like the attention, but they're allowed to like the attention. I'm sure you would like the attention if somebody's looking at you and checking you out. You're allowed to like that. You're allowed to enjoy that. And you're also allowed to then not act on that, right? That's part of life. So it's really your fault if you get caught in that trap. So just for example's sake, we do our four-week natural programs in Thailand and New York and London, these major metropolitan cities. And the clients would get phone numbers from people who might live you know, 90 minutes away and they come into town for work or for an event or they might even get a you know, Tinder or a dating app connection, but these people live a long way away and they're only temporarily in those cities. And people normally love to date, you know, want to get organized to go on dates in local areas. And there's usually an abundance of people to meet in local areas. Eventually, you may need to go further afield to meet people who you want to date and, and connect with. But in, in big cities, that's gonna be the case. Conversely, if you live, live in a regional area, like a medium-sized town or a medium-sized city, 
then you do actually want to be willing to drive a long way, ride the train a long way to make new connections, to kind of cast a wider net to find that right kind of person. I just saw it, saw it happen all the time that guys would get great phone numbers, have great attraction, have a great connection with somebody at a party, but that person had come in from way outside of town and they're really excited to meet somebody new, but then they have to go way back outside of town because that's where they live. So then the next thing is if you actually you know do get the phone number and the person is suited to you in terms of a similar lifestyle and you do set the date, what happens then is you'll set the date and then they cancel the date, right? and you tend to freak out. You ask on a date, but the problem is, I'm sure that you're probably not even really asking on a great date. You might say something like, hey, do you wanna just hang out by the beach one time? Or hey, do you wanna go grab a coffee and chill? That's not how a date should be asked. It should be a far more formal invitation. It should be, I know a place, a restaurant, bar, a chance to get dressed up. It's a really nice event. This is what I'm proposing, right? And you propose that and the person normally likes the idea of going out and having a lovely sit down with somebody. And, but oftentimes they're more agreeable than they should be. And they have things going on, career, life, sickness, health, fatigue, whatever it's gonna be. And of course, commitment to their existing friends and family. They agree to see you on a Thursday night and then they'll turn around on a Thursday and say, hey, I can't meet up with you for whatever reason. And you usually tend to take that as a rejection but that's not the case at all. People are busy. You, as a new person in their life, are not a high item in their life's list of priorities. So of course they're gonna you put you on the back burner because they wanna do something better with you when they have the chance to get prepared properly. That might mean instead of meeting on a Thursday, you would have to replan and do something, say, next Sunday night or Monday or whatever it's gonna be. So if you get a flake in that sense, if somebody agrees to the date and then pulls the pin, that's simply a renegotiation. It's not a big deal. You know, if, if you're living in a city life and somebody agrees to meet up with you and they say, can I get a rain check? It's because they're ambitious. They want to live a great life and they also do want to say yes to you, but they can't always actually say yes. They pull the pin, keep your calm, don't stress, don't freak out, don't consider it a rejection, don't go red pill thinking and we lose you forever. Instead, just say, ah, oh, all good. Shit happens, good luck with your work, hope you feel better soon. Let me circle back around in a couple of days. Remember, until you've made an emotional connection with this person, it's all pretty transactional. It's pretty business-like. So instead of you freaking out about it and taking it personally, you're, you're even allowed to date other people, go out and meet other people, but still renegotiate that date and that meetup four or five days from now, say for example, Thursday to next Monday, next Tuesday, and you're gonna be in business. What we've witnessed after 15 years of coaching pick up and dating is that normally you get a number on a weekend, you try to date on week one, the person you ask out will agree to meeting up, then then cancel almost all of the time. They will agree and then they will cancel and then they will actually meet you the next week. So normally it's like a seven or nine day gap. I know you want to date quicker, I know you want to fall in love quicker, I know you want intimacy quicker, but guess what? That's life, that's how it is, that's the rules for everybody. And if you can just be patient, you're gonna have a whole lot of dates. You're gonna avoid flakes. And you can create multiple leads at the same time. And that's all okay before you actually start connecting with people. And so now we're at a Mexican stadium. So when it comes to flaking, there's a whole different category of people in the social and dating game. And we call them adult people under the age of 24. And those people flake all of the time. So. You know, when we talk about dating and socializing, I'm in the adult professional demographic and that's kind of who this video goes out to. And I'm generally assuming that we're speaking to people and you're wanting to date people between the age of 24 and 32. People under the age of 32 are a whole different story altogether. They don't really want to date at all. They want to socialize, they want to make the most of life, they're scared of commitment, and they're pretty overwhelmed in life in general. They don't want to, you know, lock down a boyfriend or a partner right now. They want to make the most of life and focus on their career and stuff like that. The thing is, if you get a phone number from somebody who is an adult under the age of 24, and you know, it's kind of a loose rule, it could be 23, it could be 25, different in cities versus towns, etc., etc. they will always flake. Generally think those kind of people will always flake if you're trying to propose to meet up with them or go on a date with them uh, or set a one-on-one -on -one meetup. You still do want to connect, right? You want to connect with somebody who you've met with, 
but make it more like a social invitation. Invite that person, adult person under the age of 24, invite them to come with you to a party. Bring their friends, your friends, maybe you all meet an event, you all organize dinner together. That's how things should be done as an adult. Dating works like the opposite way. You get your life together, you meet somebody, you're interested in them, you propose the date, you have intimacy, and then you have a relationship. If you're under the age of 24, as a vast generalization, and I'm not being like ages here or anything like that, but as a vast generalization, if you're under the age of 24, you live your life, you have a social experience that can lead to intimacy and after the intimacy leads to the relationship. That's a vast generalization. So generally, they wanna have fun and be spontaneous, which can indirectly lead to relationships. You, in the dating game, people that I kind of appeal to, my demographic, you want to form a relationship which leads to intimacy. It's a different sort of process. But what that means is if you're dealing with people under the age of 24, it's very unlikely they're going to be committed to responding to you via text message uh, and messages. They're gonna be super, super flaky. But you, instead of you directly asking to meet up instead of proposing a negotiation, instead you can continue to ask all of the time and say, I've got a plan, let's do this, let's do that. Yes, you can continue to text and invite somebody who's an adult person under the age of 24, the politically correct way of saying a young person, and they're gonna be pretty non-committal. They will eventually agree to socially meet up with you, but just don't angle in to try to get into a relationship. Keep it social, keep it wide open, um, because people wanna socialize and be open when they're younger. They don't always wanna want to agree to a one-on-one setup date relationship with the intention of going towards intimacy. They just don't, they wanna travel, they wanna have a great time. You know, of course, never say never. Maybe sometimes they do. Uh, maybe sometimes it can be a kind of a platonic relationship in that sense with people under the age of 24. But I'm basically saying that most people under the age of 24 are gonna be most likely to be flaky when you're proposing one-on-one -on -one meetups. But if you have a different offer, good dinner, good party, good event, let's all meet up, up at the festival, um, at the party, at an event, at a club, at a bar, pre-party, the person who you're uniquely interested in, they can go for that, right? Just don't get too hung up on it, don't put your hopes on it. I know I, for one, made that mistake a whole lot when I was in that kind of demographic, speaking to people who are under the age of 24. When I was under the age of 24, it frustrated the hell out of me, but if you put that out of your head, um, then you create the opportunity to, to live in the moment with so many other people in that demographic, to, to, to create emotions and excitement and chemistry and intimacy, and the chemistry and intimacy, and intimacy that leads to the relationship, which is what you might be looking for. So you can't really plan it in terms of dates, it's more spontaneity leads to connection, and then you start dating somebody that you've already had a relationship of intimacy and chemistry with. Complicated, I know, but there it is all for you. And the last reason why you're probably getting flaked all of the time, the major reason that I see in most people, is that the honest truth is that you're simply undesirable. You're simply not an attractive type of person. You're not what women want. So let me answer that one briefly, but of course this is an ocean of a question. There's so, so much that would go into this kind of answer, but what women want, uh, what makes you desirable is three things. One, that you have zero hesitation in your own confidence. So you could be poor or fat or broke or socially nervous, but if you feel like you're going on a good trajectory, that you kind of just have belief in yourself and that you, you have hope and faith and positive vibes, that's all that you need. To, to be an attractive type of person, there's three things that are required. I'll do a whole blog on this one of these times, but it's more like a seminar that needs to be, to be done to address this. Number one, you got zero doubt in yourself, you've got a good vibe in yourself, you don't hesitate. You out there, you might think, I need confidence, I need money, I need a body, I need to have some sort of achievement. But if you just believe in where you're going, you're gonna have the right kind of vibe. And if the person you're asking the phone number for believes that, that's a good vibe and they're gonna like that, right? If you don't have that, if you think, I'm not ready, I'm not good enough, I don't have the body that I need or the car that I want, um, your vibe's off, it's not gonna work. But that's only one part of the equation, part two, it needs to be clear to the recipient, the, the girl who you're asking the phone number from, it needs to be clear that if she didn't go on a date with you, some other girl would jump at the chance just like that to go on a date with you. That so it, it needs to be clear that you're a popular type of person, right? Um, and that's a little easier said than done. But if you're you know, friendly to everyone, if you're at a party and you get the number of that girl, and then you're friendly to her friends and 
her brother and some other people and you're just a generally popular outgoing person, that's called social proof. And that's where she has that inbuilt fear of loss. So one, you're cool. Two, there's the fear of loss. And element three is that you need to be good at connecting with that person, okay? So it's all well and good if you're super cool and there's elements of jealousy. That would be like a famous person. But if you're not good at then making the effort to connect with that person individually, they won't feel connected with, they'll almost feel inferior, and the interaction's not really gonna go anywhere. So if you're not a desirable type of person, I mean including like your hair, your breath, the decent clothing, you know, having your life half together. Keep the, keep the microphone safe because we've had the kindergarten arriving over here. Um, then you're simply going to be undesirable and your numbers are always going to be flaky. There might be somebody who's similar to you in, in life, um, who's about the same level as you, who would be a great match for you. But there's almost so much more you can do mentally and socially and in your career, in the gym, financially, to make you a better person, to be desirable from the outside, to be naturally attractive. Now, obviously, that's what we do take a phone call, take coaching calls with me, do the four week natural. We can literally get you to be what women want within the month. That is zero doubt in yourself, clearly creating a fear of loss with any girl that you meet because you're popular with other girls as well and you being really good at individually connecting with the girl that you're talking to. So that's what four week natural is. And of course we have, if you're watching this video, we have events coming up in New York and London and Norway and then Croatia. And then guess what? That's when we're finishing it. That's when we're finishing four week natural in the form that we have it now. We're gonna do a couple of other types of things, a lot more exclusive, a lot more expensive, but make the, take the opportunity to do one of these last four week naturals because this is the 10th year I'm running it. It is a well oiled, machine it's a, it's a legend making machine and the best thing is there's going to be like seven other guys in your program and they're all going to be like you they all want to go out and have fun and explore and make the most out of their lives and then if you do the program in new york for example you can do the program for free in london or norway or croatia and you can join in the night game the day game the photo shoots the seminars and plenty of time to talk to me as well so we've built the community and the community will go on long after four week natural doesn't go on and that's what you want out of this is a good group of people to keep hanging out with have a great time with and so you can all go out and make sure that your numbers never flake right if you are interested in finding out more about four week natural you can simply talk to me book a call 20 minutes and we can talk about what the event would mean to you which one you could or couldn't do do you have any other questions we can talk about it but other than that the text game programs just come out that one's only 47 dollars you can get started right away and then uh, you're not gonna have any flakes. So how do we summarize all this? Make sure that you're relevant in that person's life. Get your act together, ask properly, present a decent negotiation, as in, you know, propose a decent date. Be aware of there's a different dynamic with people under the age of 24. Be a person who's desirable in general, but that takes a little bit more. I would say if you're socially well-adjusted, you're desirable in general, but there you have it. Anyway, Alex from 4 Week Natural, enough. Hopefully you've learned something, so what do you do? You click like, give it a comment, this is a niche video so I can respond to all of the comments. And uh, if you're new on the channel, as you can see, I'm getting a bit of consistency going with these videos again. Subscribe and we'll be here again every Tuesday because it's a good day to learn about life, Tuesday. Catch you later. Hope you loved this video.